Bonjour, euh, donc dans cette semaine... Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, very new session. And because of the uh, context we are, we're in right now, and thanks to Cédric Duroux, we'll be talking about several cities this week, and we will keep asking that question, and we'll avoid repeating these questions, avoid um, asking you how you are and how you're doing and how the, um, everything is going in that context. So here we are going to talk about, after uh, Guangzhou, we're going to talk about Lyon, and because of this workshop that was created several years ago, um, so we're going to talk about this workshop called Aquarev Les Maquettes. So, Julia Benacorsi, good afternoon. You're a teacher in information systems and communications. And Gilles Jequier, you're a researcher and specialist in urban data. And here we'll be having this live session from um, another workshop in um, another room with all of our students. So good afternoon, Thierry Julijo, your uh, geography and geomatics teacher. So before giving the floor to our uh, speakers, I'd like to remind you that this program is being translated and interpreted live. So please try to speak more slowly than um, usual, contrary to what I've just done, so I would like to apologize to the interpreters for that. Um, so, dear students and dear Julia, you have the floor. So, good afternoon, everyone. We are here to talk about uh, Portrait d'Espace, this um, city um, portrait or picture or study. So this workshop was led with students from the University of Lyon. And you will see on screen what their specialty is. So they're, they're all geographers, social scientists, and IT engineers in the making. And they focused on a neighborhood that was founded in the 1960s and for the model of uh, urban planning. And it was the second business center and business hub in France called La Pardieu. So for this workshop, we asked them, um, in order to um, provoke them a little bit, what was the place of nature in La Pardieu. So we've led that workshop since um, 2019, so it's a third edition. And we want to, uh, we'd like to encourage our students to interact and debate upon our city, and we try to uh, work on 3D mock-ups. In this very specific year, and peculiar year, of course, it was impossible to uh, work and study all together, but we've um, organized remote sessions in order to um, keep going with our project. So you'll see how diverse the answers were, and you'll see the creative process that was a collective one concerning that neighborhood. So you'll see the presentations from six groups, first with a video and then with mock-ups that will show what their vision and their view of the city is. Each group will present the presentation after the video uh, is played. So what you can see here is a map of the area we focused on. 
So from the six variations, we'll see how things can converge and we'll try to, we've tried to play with the various scales from the past, the present and the future for our inhabited resilience. So we'll have six proposals. And as it was just said, that will be presented around a video and then an oral presentation. So the first proposal on this first, on this purple area here on the map, on the picture. So the proposal is a park from uh, Valentine, Camille, Idrissa, Julien, and Valentin, and you're now going to watch the video. Non, c'était juste avant. C'était c'était l'autre. La première image était la bonne, mais ça c'est une autre vidéo. So apparently this is not the right video. We're going to try to find we're going to try and find the right one. That's the right one. Okay. Alors les vidéos, il n'y a pas forcément de son sur euh, sur ces vidéos qui vont vous être présentées. So there's no sound on these videos. Alors justement, s'il n'y a pas eu de son, euh, en l'occurrence, comment travailler les étudiants en scénar qui nous ont aidés Well, if there's no sound, maybe we can comment on the, this video. So how did they work What were their tools Well, they were quite free in terms of the format that they wanted to use. But we started off with a field visit, and then they were free. They could do whatever they wanted in terms of presentation. Here, that, that, that is a 3D space, just like a video game, for instance. And they could add contextual descriptions or different ways of bringing back plants and trees inside the space. So you've, you've seen a, a Lego mock-up. And we've also um, used some data from the municipality so that we could build 3D maps. So these were hybrid uh, maps, so there were physical mock-ups and 3D mock-ups. And we could use these technologies in function of according to what we wanted to do. Everything was done very quickly, of course. This is not finalized. They're not experts at what they did. The idea of, of leaving our students, uh, of letting them feel free to do whatever whatever they wanted it was absolutely um, crucial but I'd like to remind you that it took them two and a half days to do this and to build up on what you just said. So how did it work in terms of group work? The idea is to merge skills and to, to use them all together as geographers, as mediators, or for communications. So now we can give them the floor if they want to tell us a little bit more about what they did.
Well, good afternoon, everyone. The, the video you've just seen is a summary of what we've done, and it's part of the rehabilitation of the, neighbor, the neighborhood Pardieu, and the project is called Pardieu 2023, in order to change um, the way this neighborhood was shaped and to make it more open and greener. What's really important in that neighborhood is to enhance all these spaces full of concrete and try to um, build common spaces for this very diverse population in this neighborhood. And it offers green spaces, green public spaces for the well-being of its inhabitants and also for energy performance, the access to natural light or the mitigation of heat. The objective was to um, renovate this um, this bridge, and so Lincoln Garibaldi Street to Vivier Mer neighborhood. This was dismantled and it created this pathway from north to south, and it, it had lost its meaning because of the situation of the neighborhood. And have you seen, this is, our project is an immersive uh, 3D project offering our viewers to see what, what the new uh, space will be like. And so this 3D visit, the idea of this visit was to visit it on a, a white space. So this was interesting to us because it offered a global, a broad picture for everyone thanks to um, a tool that is comparable to a Google Street View. This can be used by anyone, passers-by or workers. And we've tried to choose urban furniture that would encourage um, exchange and communication with, between all the different um, populations of the neighborhood. And now I'm going to leave the floor to the next group. And the next proposal is called The Green Escape, and it will be presented by Noemi, Colomb, Micheline, Serigny, Lorenzo, Leila, and Camille. And here is the video. Alors nous n'aurons pas de son non plus sur cette vidéo. Euh, on leur en a préféré. So there won't be any uh, audio on this video either. Um, we decided to have videos without audio to avoid having copyright issues with uh, any music we might use. We thought it would be more useful to um, have a discussion uh, during the video, which is not necessarily in sync with the video. So this is a, a Lego model, we were, uh, the one we were talking about earlier, which gives us a good overview. And video game graphics were used uh, to provide ideas in a particular uh, context. So this could be either in 2D, as you see here, or as a VR or virtual reality uh, rendering. Hi, it's Kabi uh, here. I took part in the project and I'm going to talk about the video. So we decided to bring in a few different perspectives 
in this immersive view, thanks to the 3D mock-up uh, in city, using in-city. So this is a viewpoint that could be a viewpoint of a bird, for example. Then we decided to look at the perspective of a, an ant or any other kind of insect. So this is what an insect might see. So it gives you an idea of the uh, circuit. Uh, that uh, not only humans but any other species could take if they were inhabiting this area, if the area was uh, more rich in vegetation, as you can see here. So different types of trees, shrubs, and uh, ground-based vegetation to create this, uh, this idea of continuity uh, of vegetation, which can provide uh, habitats for different uh, species, but also allow them to circulate around the area. So here's the auditorium. So someone from our team designed this space in a different way, or uh, represented this space in a different way, in watercolors, to give you an idea of what this auditorium could look like if more vegetation was planted. The idea behind that was to have some kind of ecological continuity and greater biodiversity in the area. Thank you very much. Nous te laissons continuer sur ton texte à moins que tu aies déjà donné so, tous, tous les éléments. Please continue unless you've already finished. I've said everything already. So we can talk about the process which allowed us to create this uh, échappée verte, this green escapade uh, idea. So what we really noticed in the Pardieu was a lack of continuity in the Pardieu space, which is very much affected by town planning uh, restrictions and uh, imperatives, and there are three actual levels which is difficult to uh, really manage. And greater vegetation, we thought, and more vegetation, we thought would create greater continuity between the different levels in the area. And the idea was really was to create this continuum through uh, shrubs, through trees, through different plants, to provide a habitat for different species and to allow species to circulate around the area more easily, and also for humans humans to have a, um, uh, to be able to have a more pleasant area to uh, inhabit and we also looked from the perspective of different animals and went beyond the aesthetic uh, requirements and looked at different ideas and concepts um, such as ecological corridors so as to group together and connect habitats which are essential for certain species and this um, continuum of vegetation uh, in the Pardieu space would allow this. So we worked in, in City, which is a game uh, uh, gaming software, which allows it to be a little bit more visually appealing, a bit, little bit more childlike and it, this allowed us to uh, put ourselves in the shoes of any other kind of species that might be in this area. So we were inspired by different e existing projects, such as La Coulée Verte, and different town planning projects, which use this idea of a, a green corridor, a green continuum. And if we had had more time, we could have looked at different areas in the city uh, to try and connect different green spaces and ensure even greater green con continuity. Merci beaucoup, hein. Thank you very much. Merci à vous. La proposition suivante. So the next proposal is the anti-burnout, and this is going to have some audio. This is presented by Bastien, Jeanne, Ariane, Dina and Fanny. So this is between the railway station and the Pardieu neighborhood. Bonjour, je m'appelle Lucie. Hello, my name is Lucy. I work in Lyon. I am a project manager at the administrative quarter in La Pardieu. And I take the train from Vienne, which is quite a long way away, to Lyon Pardieu. And I commute morning and evening. My company is 10 minutes from the station. It's crowded, it's noisy, there are traffic lights which slow everyone down. 
it takes 15 minutes ultimately. I would like a kind of walkway, a, a pedestrian bridge covered in plants, which would make the journey to my company more pleasant. At 10.30, we have a coffee break, me and my colleagues, but there are very few calm and pleasant areas near my work, unfortunately. I would like to have coffee outside in a calm and uh, pleasant uh, area. So this pedestrian bridge could include a, an area for people to relax and have a break from their day and it would be nicer than just having buildings to stare at. So vegetation it would be important, an important part of this. I have several options uh, for lunch either have lunch in a restaurant in a neighborhood or I get a takeaway from the shopping center which I might eat at work sometimes uh, I think to myself I'd like to have an outdoor space uh, uh, where you could have lunch with other people here you could have a kind of terrace outside the shopping center away from the noise of the traffic so you could have a, a, a nice, pleasant, quiet picnic at the center of the Pardieu. You could have, for example, a community um, canteen. At around 3 o'clock, I usually have a meeting with a customer. I like to go out and meet the customer outside when the weather's nice, like it is today. It would be nice to have an outdoor space to be able to do so. For example, an outdoor co-working space. People could meet uh, for their business meetings or just to have a quiet chat. Around 6 o'clock I leave work, I head to the station and get back on the train. But depending on the train times I might wait 5 minutes or 30 minutes for a train and uh, waiting half an hour uh, in a crowd on a platform is never pleasant. I would like to have somewhere where I can wait in the station, somewhere nice, uh, a waiting room with vegetation, with natural light, where you feel good, where you feel uh, relaxed. So we are going to hand the floor to the two representatives of this particular team. Hello, everybody. So for our project, we visited the Pardieu neighborhood. We put ourselves in the shoes of a worker whose company works on the administrative quarter of the neighborhood. And we took a walk from the station to this uh, district and we, when we did so we realized that the walk isn't that pleasant because of the noise, because of the traffic, because it's crowded. And we realized there's a lack of green spaces, areas to relax in the open air where people and workers can meet up during their breaks. Uh, or during lunch and meet up with uh, other colleagues. We thought about uh, setting up a green space um, between the station and administrative district uh, to make the walk between the two more pleasant. We also thought about installing co-working spaces as presented in the video. Uh, shared gardens also, with restaurants uh, surrounding them. Somewhere that is less than five minutes walk for workers from their company. And finally we thought about a uh, plant filled waiting room in the Pardieu railway station to make waiting for the train more pleasant. It's not always easy to sit there uh, for half an hour waiting for your train at the end of a hard work day.
in, a, in, a, in an unpleasant environment. So to conclude, the aim was to make the neighborhood more pleasant by uh, creating calm, tranquil green spaces to increase the well-being of workers. The creation of green spaces would improve the physical and mental health of employees, and it would help them relax and help the local inhabitants relax and reduce the chance of uh, having a burnout. Thank you very much. So let's move on to the next presentation, which is about children and their place in the city. This is a propo proposition by Fanny Clarisse, Leo, Ashley and Aminata. was, what if we took the perspective of children, if we looked at things from their viewpoint? So please continue with your presentation. Hi everyone. So for this workshop, we presented a perspective, a study based on a 3D mock-up with a particular thematic constraint, nature at the Pardieu. So first of all, we looked at uh, vegetation, then we moved on to architecture, um, town planning and we looked at it from the perspective of a town planner rather than just a user. So in the Pardieu neighborhood, it was, we realized it was difficult to find quiet green spaces in this area. There's lots of traffic, lots of noise, very little vegetation. And when we tried to shelter from the wind, we found a, a spot between the library and Pardieu shopping center. And this particular spot had a, quite a nice atmosphere. It's like an enclave of urban vegetation, and it actually seemed to be quite abandoned, in fact. So we decided to study uh, this space uh, from a fictional perspective. We looked at it as if it was a break from the agitation of the city. So we tried to give such a, a meaning, uh, tried to give meaning to this urban space. We thought it would be important to define it as a, a place to live in and to experience uh, uh, socialization. This is located between, this neighborhood is between the station and the administrative quarter. It's a place where people uh, gather to make, to do shopping, to do all sorts of things. 
Alors, né du désir de créer un lieu cabane, so, la cachette des Gones favorise l'imaginaire. The cachette des Gones is somewhere where you can let your imagination run free, somewhere that makes you want to explore the urban landscape. It is something that harks back to the idea of the invisible. It would allow you to discover nature. Adopting the viewpoint of a child allows you to see what kind of use they would like to make of a space. A space that allows you to play, to meet others, to explore, to hide, to, to try things out, to fall over, to get up again, to get lost and to find your way again. So we uh, wanted to create a space that was dreamlike, uh, the dream of a child. And to do so, we used reference from our own childhood, uh, uh, films of Miyazaki, uh, books of Claude Ponté. We created a poetic universe based on nature and the imaginary world of children. So we chose plants and, and types of vegetation based on the uh, space required, the flowering period, to enable the area to have a continuous and living aesthetic. We wanted to create harmony between the city and nature and establish a symbiotic relationship between plants and structures. So we created urban furniture, which was vegetized, um, giant roots instead of stairs, and uh, structures that allowed climbing plants to, to flourish. We created also a, a kind of cabin where the urban world and the, and the plant world would meet. Thank you very much. So we're going to look at the next project, which is Suspended Canopy. That's the title. This was created by Irina. Theo. Je vais venir à ton secours, Bruno. Bruno, Mauro, Barbara, Luca Kova et Mathieu et Noé. Luca Kova, Mathieu et Noé.
bien, on va, on va vous écouter, nous dire quelques mots de, de ce renversement. Ok, Listen to you now and see what you've done with nature. Good afternoon, everyone. The objective of our work is to talk about the relationship between uh, vegetation and the urban space. The Bardieu neighborhood feels abandoned a little bit with ambitious architectural projects that haven't been refreshed in many years. So that's why we focused on this area, and we considered that this, the absence of uh, vegetation does not encourage people to socialize in these spaces. So we've tried to understand and rethink this space by bringing more vegetation inside the, the neighborhood. And before building the mock-up, we have tried and think of these spaces and rethink these spaces. And we paid visits. We visited the, the neighborhood and we felt really oppressed by this uh, ocean of concrete. We had this imposed route outside the uh, shopping center. And we realized that there was no vegetation for, to, to breathe. Then the first step outside the shopping center is a staircase. But we should not forget the practical side of things. So the vegetation should decorate and not be get in the way of um, the urban space. It should be an urban vegetalized path that um, should be taken spontaneously by passers-by. And it shows how things can be uh, owned by the people who go through this neighborhood and walk inside this neighborhood. So this is a way for the people in the cities to own this shared garden. And it's also a place of isolation, a true garden suspended in time and space with this renewable and sustainable approach. It will be a countryside bubble inside the city. Pour conclure par ce scénario fictif créé pour l'atelier, nous postulons que les visiteurs seront So with this scenario, we think that our visitors will go through this corridor and will help people relax, breathe, take a break and isolate from the external world. So through this urban walk, we hope we've shown how vegetation can help us breathe inside the city. Thank you. Dernière présentation, si je me trompe pas. Donc la dernière. And now let's move on to the last presentation. Vegetal dystopia. Of course, we live in. We're going through hard times, and it's quite close to the situation we're living in right now, the situation we're experiencing. So we're going to see what our students have to sh can, can show. So, 
the urban space should be uh, maintained and, and renewed. The roof of the auditorium is falling apart. In 2200, the nature uh, took back its rights and we can see that vegetation is everywhere. The windows and openings from the auditorium are totally different. The lush vegetation kept its space and the space is partially renewed for new events. It's easy to walk by in this natural space and there are new routes and pathways for spontaneous uses. And now the inhabitants of Lyon are in full harmony with nature in their city. So good afternoon everyone. As we've wanted to develop this project, we started with a field visit and we focused on this auditorium space and we noticed some different things. First, we saw that it was difficult to go around the building. We all had to go through stairs. And the second thing is that the period at the time, at this time of the year, and right now in Lyon, there are lots of um, building works going on. And because of the pandemic and lockdown, it's not very uh, comfortable and easy to walk by. And the place of nature in this neighborhood is only, um, plays only a role of just occupying some empty spaces to the side, of the, the side of the street, for instance. And so the idea that we had in this projection for the future was to question the relationship between mankind and nature through this urban space. And right now, the relationship is that human beings are in control and the idea of, of, of using this uh, remote future is to use a pre-existing nature in this in the urban space so we've picked we've chosen the state in order for us to have as much freedom as possible in order for us to understand what nature could become if um, humans had no control over it. And in order not to be too pessimistic because of the times we're going through, we wanted to show that we can always do something with nature and together with nature. Well, thank you very much. And that was the last group, wasn't it? So these presentations are different, there are different scales, um, the priorities were land use and, and urban planning, the scale was also something that was imposed on the students and 3D maps can become tools in order to raise questions on a neighborhood. So these were the prerequisites and these were the, the, the things that we um, offered the students to work on for two and a half days. So they, uh, as you said, they worked on it for two and a half days so the first day was dedicated to the field visits, right? 
So if I understand well, it had to do with the vegetation in the neighborhood. And each year, you um, place the students in other situations, right? And just to um, remind us of what you did last year, what other neighborhoods did you focus on? And what did you want them to work on? Well, in just a, a few words, uh, we also focused on um, Perrache train station, and we worked in another uh, with another approach. And so students could uh, come up with uh, with different and f let's say more free or freer ideas and concerning the, their relationship to nature and that was the first thing that we did and there was a mock-up that was uh, lended by um, SPL Confluence. We um, also focused on another project and another building. It's an architectural project in uh, the eastern part of the city on Porte des Alpes campus. So we wanted to work on the building and its future uses and also th its integration inside the campus and the um, territory around it. So we're gradually accumulating this experience the experience of these workshops. And this year, it was done in a very peculiar way, because in the previous years, the presentations were around the mock-ups. And this year, of course, we've used a, a digital uh, mock-up, so that was from a remote in a remote context, and so it was. It was probably um, more open than in the past, as people could express themselves freely. And so here, this is a, a very multifaceted um, picture that we've given from this this neighborhood, thanks to the students. And so this project. Shows the limitations and all the, the limits for this neighborhood in terms of well being and psychological well being, as some students um, presented. And then the objective is also to show um, this space study. And probably in the first project, the approach is to come up with this 3D mock-up that allows us to um, work in a transversal way with other tools. And this year, a lot of um, sketches were used and also some pictures. Also, Google Street Views were used. And we do think that this kaleidoscope shows how we can play with reality. And it's a very immersive uh, look to the neighborhood and it allows it allows us to try and merge reality and our imagination through sketches for instance well, this is something that we've done over three years but we've tried and collect data through mock-ups, actual mock-ups, or 3D mock-ups, or printed mock-ups, or architectural mock-ups mock like last year. And so these data 
les propos que l'on a envie de fuel on the project and for instance we can see the population uh, walking by in the mock-ups or in the videos and these data do play a role in our everyday lives for instance with our digital twins and our students who've, who've accepted to play our game with these projects try to reflect upon the role of data and the limits that data can have. And so this is something that we need to keep doing with my colleagues so that we can come up with new mock-ups proposals and according to in function of what we'll do in, in the future we'll probably come up with different approaches to um, space and so for you this year for this uh, for Pardieu neighborhood these projects, these projects focused on Pardieu train station that is gradually becoming, gradually becoming a, a historic uh, neighborhood. And some of the bridges that were that were destroyed had, were 40 years old, so they're they're not that old and so it's interest it's interesting for these younger generations to focus on um, a neighborhood that's not that old actually and it's interesting to see what can be made possible in these spaces and what they can imagine. And as Thierry is not with us live, but as you've known the neighborhood for longer than your students, and I'm sorry to, to have to say this, but is it something striking for you or impactful Although I don't know how dense it is, I don't have all the, the information about it, how impactful vegetation could be in this neighborhood. Maybe we could hear Thierry Joliveau after just uh, after uh, after this well we have a few minutes left so we still have a little bit of time to discuss these topics well these questions can be quite um, concrete um, the notion of of shelter and of heat were raised so these are very open spaces, can be very pleasant, but at the same time can be really windy, and sometimes it can be very hot in the summer. So the question of vegetation is also useful in terms of uh, temperature reduction and mitigation. Maybe we could give the floor to Thierry Joliveau, who's here with us. So, regarding the question of nature at La Pardieu, we had the theme of nature on the one hand. Uh, in the Lego model uh, of La Pardieu, we, we combine the two themes, but, but the theme is interesting because the Pardieu neighborhood is not somewhere you really stick around in. You, you kind of pass through it. It's a functional neighborhood. It's somewhere you go through to go from one place to another. And there are two ways of uh, walking across. Uh, it's either on top, uh, on the top level, on the paving stones, on the slabs, or underneath through the tunnel. So there are a few constraints uh, when it comes to vegetizing, uh, to planting uh, vegetation in the area, because because it's difficult to, uh, to, to to plant trees and uh, shrubs on concrete. So p part of the project was about really uh, reappropriating different parts of the neighborhood. For those of you who know the area, you don't necessarily see all the different parts 
uh, all different spaces when you pass through. Because when uh, we looked, uh, when we started the project, I, uh, we discovered new uh, new places we hadn't ever seen before. Uh, La Pardieu is constantly evolving. It's got a, a barracks there. Uh, it's not that old. It's from the uh, turn of the century. And uh, La Pardieu is offers also opportunities. It's currently being updated. There are works in progress. Uh, these have been uh, redesigned by the uh, local uh, uh, government uh, and a project to bring plants to Le Pardieu, more vegetation to Le Pardieu is underway. We don't have that much to do with this. We don't have people who are specialized in uh, bringing uh, vegetation to the city among the students. So this, uh, these various uh, these students who come from various backgrounds, not necessarily uh, urban planning and landscaping, they have uh, the potential to bring new ideas to what could be brought to this business district in the coming years. And your students. Uh, demonstrated a certain sensitivity. I'm not sure, and this remains to be demonstrated. It's hard to be able to use projections from, of the perspective of a bird or an insect, of different humans who use the space. Uh, so the fact that they used this, these kind of ideas was very original and something that raises certain questions we might not have asked before. Do you have any ideas on the situation and on other ideas you would like to work on next year? Anything you feel uh, might uh, attract you? Any desires? Well, what we saw last year is that it's a good idea to focus on a particular area and start off with a visit of the neighborhood which allows you to have specific proposals. We also had discussions on certain zones. We have been working on chemi uh, Chemical Valley, uh, which is uh, part, which is a, 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 um, uh, an industrial area in France. Um, so it's interesting to go and see different areas like this, different places with different opportunities. We started off with La Pardieu. And what this made us realize is that uh, you might be able to come up with different types of mock-ups. And the Université Lumière in Lyon, this ruche, the beehive building, which is going to be created, which is going to be a place for students to exchange and to, to interact. Work has started on this. And why not think about um, expanding this rationale to different areas? For La Pardieu, we haven't really initiated such uh, discussions, such thinking, because it's a difficult area to develop. And uh, the city has put forward a plan for uh, energy saving development, uh, including uh, the planting of many, many trees. It's part of the canopy plan. So, why did we choose Pardieu? Well, because when we built this Pardieu mock up, to be able to think about the issues at hand with experts on the topics involved, what we did with our uh, urban planning experts, uh, from whom our students have been able to learn and ha have been able to enrich their skill set, which is not necessarily focused on these issues. As you will have understood, this is uh, at the crossroads between what professionals might do and think about for such an area and what complete Luddites might do. Might, not Luddites, but um, people who are not at all proficient in these topics. And this approach allows us to build uh, projects from the ground up without any preconceptions. So nearly 40 students were involved. Thank you to all of them for working so hard to create these concepts and these mock-ups. Thank you to all of you.